Hi, welcome back to my views and news. Two new stories. First one is from the Amhara region. For the first time, it seems that Ethiopian military is in trouble in the Amhara region. I have been updating you about fighting uh, ongoing in the region for several weeks. Uh, military uh, has been retaking territories, but uh, a new move made by the military indicates that uh, ENDF is under pressure in the Amhara region. I want to share uh, a new story with you which uh, hints at the pressure which Ethiopian National Defense Force is under in the Amhara region. Secondly, was Tigray. Tigray opposition party leaders, all of them have been released. Uh, we know that on Thursday, dozens were arrested when uh, the opposition party workers, leaders tried to protest in Makale, Tigray's capital. But after court orders, all opposition workers, leaders were released. Question is, uh, is judiciary and the security institution uh, are they on the same page or security institution tried to crush opposition but judiciary gave relief to opposition parties? Who is the head of uh, judiciary in Tigray? Who appointed him? Who is he close to? Secondly, uh, get the show met with Mike Hammer. We'll have uh, a look at that. So firstly, viewers, uh, Amhara region of Ethiopia where a military operation is ongoing. Ongoing for a few months, military claims as if uh, uh, things are back to normal in the Amhara region. Uh, Arag Akabbezi, the president, also claimed there is occasional guerrilla war, according to him, guerrilla fighting. Uh, Jula is challenging Fano fighters to show if they have uh, captured any tanks, uh, if they have captured any army officers, etc. So, military is trying to give this impression as if nothing is happening in the Amhara region. But, a new development uh, indicates that Ethiopian military is under pressure in the Amhara region. Military, ENDF, Ethiopian government, they can issue Gidajs. Gidajs are directives. Military in times of uh, need can direct vehicle owners, bus owners, uh, truck owners to provide services to the Ethiopian government, Ethiopian National Defense Force. It is in accordance with Ethiopian law. And these vehicle owners cannot say no. Government uh, pays them for their services, but the amount of money paid, fees which are paid, are decided by the government. Vehicle owners cannot uh, demand certain fees for providing services to Ethiopian National Defense Force. And during Tigray War, we saw that Ethiopian military uh, told the vehicle owners to provide services. Gidards were issued and vehicle owners had to provide services to Ethiopian military. These vehicle owners were paid to some complain that payment was not enough, it was small payment. Now, in the Amhara region, while military claim there is no war here, uh, Amhara president says there is occasional guerrilla fighting here, Military has uh, issued directives, federal government has issued directives, gidards, to vehicle owners and uh, bus owners, truck owners. They have been told to provide services to Ethiopian National Defense Force. It means that uh, uh, for maybe for the supply of logistics, for the supply of, uh, for the movement of uh, END of personnel, these private vehicles are going to be used. 
Now, the uh, private transporters will have to comply with these gidards, with these instructions. Why did military issue these directives? There could be only two reasons. One reason is that uh, military is facing shortage of transportation, uh, transport vehicles. It does not have enough trucks, enough buses. That is why it wants the services of private transporters. But uh, it's hard to, uh, I don't think that military is facing shortage of vehicles. Military has uh, uh, thousands of uh, vehicles which it can use for transportation. Transportation of manpower, transportation of logistics. Then what is the reason? Why is that? Uh, private transporters are being contacted. Well, I have been saying, if you remember, that the roads are difficult to travel on in the Mahara region for Ethiopian military. In several videos, I shared with you uh, the attacks carried out, details of attacks carried out by Fano fighters. Fano fighters are making it difficult for military to move from Romia to Gujum, from Addis Ababa to North Shore zone of the Amhara region. Uh, just yesterday, uh, a convoy of military was ambushed near Debris uh, near uh, Lumame to some convoys were ambushed a few days ago. So, all roads leading from uh, Romia to Amhara are not safe. Wherever military convoys are seen on the move, Fano fighters get information and they are ready. They are ready, deployed close to these uh, uh, major roads and military convoys are ambushed. It is happening across the Mahara region. It means that if military uh, wants to get reinforcements, it should not use military vehicles. It should use private vehicles. That is why these uh, private transporters have been hired. Now, logistics, military logistics will be supplied to the Ethiopian military in the Amhara region through private vehicles owned by transporters. Now, two points here again. Firstly, uh, no transporter likes uh, to be... Uh, to receive uh, a gidaj uh, because uh, divers lives uh, are endangered uh, if for example ammunition is being supplied through uh, private vehicles the vehicle can be attacked by other group so it means vehicle owners their truck drive the drivers are in danger their lives in danger secondly as i said earlier amount of fee is decided by the government not by vehicle owners. They cannot say no. So, this development indicates that uh, it is difficult for Ethiopian military to move freely and safely in the Amhara region. Fano fighters now uh, obviously will find a way to counter this new strategy adopted by Ethiopian National Defense Force. But in this new strategy adopted by Ethiopian National Defense Force, the lives of vehicle owners and drivers could be endangered. And I think that Fano fighters are going to issue warnings and threats. Like they have been warning Prosperity Party members, telling them not to support uh, Ethiopian military. I think here again, they would threaten transporters, that transporters should not comply with Giddards. Transporters cannot say no, as I said earlier, if they say no, their vehicles will be captured by military and they could be arrested. So, transporters in a difficult position, but this entire development shows that uh, Ethiopian military is under pressure. Uh, it, it is claiming to be in control, but... Uh, uh, it is uh, a difficult task to control entire Amhara region, to control all the roads, to ensure that 
all roads are safe for travel, all towns, it is under government control. It's uh, a very difficult task, it seems. Secondly, we have Stegarai, where opposition party leaders, workers were arrested on Thursday when opposition parties, four parties, Salse Vajene, Betona, Tegra, Independence Party, Tegra, Arena Party uh, decided to protest jointly, but they were not allowed to protest on Thursday. Get the chose government launched a crackdown. Opposition party workers, politicians, uh, demobilized TDF members, journalists were beaten at Romanot Square in Makale. Uh, police ruthlessly beat opposition party leaders and they were arrested. A court granted them bail on Friday. Despite granting of bail uh, on Friday, these opposition party workers were kept in prison and today they were released. On Monday, all opposition party workers, leaders were released from prison in Makale. Question is who gave relief to opposition party members? Can we say that uh, Tegarai judiciary and Tegarai police are not on the same page? Uh, and Tegarai judiciary is uh, opposing government policy of crackdown on opposition parties. Well, uh, Tegarai judiciary is led by a new face. His name is Sigai Birhane. Appointed as head of Tegarai uh, top court a few days ago. The man, Sigai Birhan, is close to top TPL affiliators. He's close to the Bratson Gabriel Mikhail. He's a young man and he's close to Professor Kendeya too. So I don't think that uh, Sigai Birhane can go against TPLF. I think that uh, Sigai Birhane and TPLF are on the same page. Just good cop, bad cop policy. Opposition party workers had to be released because we saw that this issue was uh, raised by Tegarian diaspora. Amnesty International issued a statement. It was difficult for Tegarian government to justify uh, the use of force on opposition party leaders and workers in Makale. Tegarai government is in need of international support, in need of diaspora support. Tegarai has a long way to go. Uh, it needs money for demobilization, uh, reintegration of its fighters. It needs money for rebuilding, reconstruction. It cannot isolate itself. Uh, it cannot go against uh, international uh, calls for uh, action in Tegarai. That is why I think Katachos government was a force to to give relief to opposition parties. Let's see what opposition does now. Will opposition parties issue another a call for protest, which is very likely, I think. Uh, secondly, Gatacho held a meeting with Mike Hammer this afternoon. The two leaders, the two held a meeting. Uh, Mike Hammer is in Ethiopia on a visit. Uh, agenda is obviously Tegarai, uh, Oromi, Amhara. Mainly, I think Amhara is the agenda. But uh, implementation of Pretoria deal is also part of the agenda of uh, Mike Hammer's visit. Mike Hammer played a key role in bringing the parties to Tegarai conflict to the table in Djibouti and in Pretoria. Uh, so he's very close to TPLF. Uh, his meeting with Gatacho shows the uh, closeness between Tegarai leaders and uh, the US. Despite this closeness, Implementation Pretoria deal is being delayed. Tegarai fighters being demobilized, but they are protesting. No money, no jobs offered to them, no economic activity in Tegarai, no large scale projects announced for reconstruction in Tegarai. So, uh, Ethiopian government dragging its feet, it is facing shortage of funds, it does not want to spend a lot in Tegarai. Overall, Tegarai is fighting uh, on its own. I mean, Gatacho is holding direct talks with Western uh, diplomats and US. He wants uh, financial aid from uh, these players for implementation of Pretoria deal and for reconstruction of Tegarai. Let's see, uh, can Gatacho uh, manage uh, to uh, overcome the challenges which he is facing? But 
he is facing multiple challenges and uh, it's difficult for him uh, to meet all these challenges.